Hi everybody, thank you so very much for joining me for another episode of Screw the Cubicle TV. This is the channel to help inspire you. Sorry for my rooster there. <laughs> uh, this is a channel to help inspire you to break free from the conventional work life and into a better version of your life and your career. So today I want to talk about the F word focus. Um, so if you guys are sort of in the beginning stage of uh, transitioning, right, from your nine to five into a side hustle or into um, creating a business idea for yourself while you're, st you're still in, the f in a full-time job, I know how it felt like because I think when six years ago, uh, when I decided to quit, I mean, there were just so many things that I had to get ready, right, in order to feel prepared to take the leap. And one of the biggest questions obviously was, well, how would I make a living outside of my corporate job? And I bet that you're having uh, that question as well for you. So when we think about launching a business or launching a freelance business or a side hustle, uh, it's very likely that you are feeling a bit overwhelmed, right? And because of the overwhelmed of sort of doing all the things or maybe sleuthing online and seeing what everyone else is doing, and it's like 101 steps of what you think you have to do, this is sort of causing you a bit of lack of focus and direction. Uh, but really, it's not really about the steps, I think, that's really causing this lack of focus. Uh, I think the lack of focus really for you is caused by not knowing what you want. Uh, and that is really the number one primary, uh, primarily the, the first thing uh, that I always ask people uh, about what do they imagine, right? When it even comes to the work that they love or a lifestyle that they want, until they really know what they want in terms of that destination of what that experience is going to feel like, look like, you know, um, it's really hard to sort of craft the next few steps, right, to get to there. So this video today, I really want to help you sort of cut through the noise, cut through what you think you have to do versus what is actually necessary to get you closer to that experience that you want to craft for yourself. Uh, and I'm going to give you as well a quick little free training at the end of this video. So watch uh, through to that uh, to get access to the free webinar I do about goal planning and how to create more focus and direction in your life. All right. So when I talked about the begin in the beginning of this video about uh, focus, um, I was talking also about really being able to know what you want, right? To pick the right goals and not to be overwhelmed with too many goals uh, because we are only human, right? We have 24 hours a day in a day uh, and very likely you are working a full-time job. So time is limited, right? Time is your resource and asset at this point. So we need to be really, really mindful about picking the right things to do so that you're focused on completing as you get a feeling the sense of completion uh, with your tasks uh, so that you can move on, right? Open more doors, and open the next door that's really uh, the right one for you. So the first step here is to pick only one to three goals that you want to be working on, let's say for the next quarter. So I like planning my goals um, in sort of three month intakes because that's digestible. It's something that's not too far into the future. Uh, it's sort of easy to imagine what needs to happen in three months versus something in three years, right? So just bite size everything down for you in the timeline. Uh, and I usually will work on sort of one goal at a time um, every single month until that's completed before I move on to the next goal. And that's going to hold you accountable, right? And those steps or goals will make sense. You know, one comes before the other. So there's a sequential order to your goals, but you must first sort of pick what those one to three goals are. So here's how to sort of look at your goals. Um, you want to pick the most important goals from sort of these, these three ways that I would sort of look at it. Uh, the first one is very simple. What can't you stop thinking about? Right? What is something that just keeps on sort of when you, you go to bed at night or when you wake up in the morning, it's sort of the thing you think about, oh, I wish I could do that, or I wish I could have this, or, or I wish I could experience this. That's very likely the first thing that you have to move or the first um, you know, goal that you need to complete uh, in order uh, to sort of move you forward with feeling much more fulfilled in your life. What does that thing sound like? What is that, um, that goal for you? Um, and the second way I would look at goals as well, or what is the thing I should do next, is to really pick the one that scares you the most, right? The ones that scares the shit out of you is usually the one that you want to tackle because what scares you the most is also what you value you and want the most. Um, if the fear wasn't there, that would be the thing that you want to pursue. So this is the part to get real honest with yourself about what that is and know that that is very likely the big goal that you have. 
And you can look at that big goal and actually make three goals from that probably because it might be quite a long journey to get to that goal. So don't think that you have to have three big goals. It, you could start from sort of one big goal and chunk that down to three mini goals that will allow you to step into uh, the ultimate sort of goal that you're trying to reach. Um, and I want you to think about your year, right? So when I start a new year, um, it's always a, a great thing for me to think about uh, what do I want to experience this year. You know, who are the people I want to meet? What are the things that I want to spend my time doing? Uh, what do I foresee myself really enjoying uh, spending focus on that's going to allow me to sort of pick the circumstances, the types of things that I'm working on that leads me closer to that experience, right? The way that you might describe that experience could sort of be a bit of a story, right? By the end of the year, I want to feel this, I want to be um, experiencing this, right? The word experiencing is sort of more open-ended, where you, um, you know, are talking about feelings, right? Talking about how you will feel uh, when you reach a particular destination, and that allows you to, to sort of feel into that and know that the things that you should be focusing on should lead you to more of those feelings, right? More of that experience uh, and whatever goals that you sort of brainstorm, you want to check in with yourself again. Are these goals leading me to the life experience I want to have this year? Not forever, because we don't know what's going to happen, but just this year. All right, so when you get to your top one to three goals, maybe it's just one goal, that's totally good enough, especially if that goal is super big, you can chunk that down even uh, further, uh, is this part, which is I've already started talking about it, chunking down, right? Making them bite-sized steps. Uh, when we sort of can foresee um, the simple tasks that we have to do in order to get to our big picture goals, it's going to allow you to feel more confident that you can actually achieve it uh, a lot faster than waiting to celebrate when you actually get to the final goal, right? So for sure, uh, you want to plan big picture, and like I said, even the big picture can be can be a little bit shorter term, like you know every three months or for the next three months. Um, but you want to sort of work backwards from there and start to plan out what are the sort of small steps that you need to accomplish uh, in order to get to the final destination of that goal for the three months. So you can celebrate and have a little party uh, and give yourself a pat on the back. You want to learn to reward yourself along the way so you do feel motivated. You do feel inspired to continue because you sort of have a way to checklist some some of the things that you have to do and be able to be uh, less overwhelmed uh, in daunting tasks that actually are let's say five steps at a time uh, and you're sort of said in a note it's one big step what, which you can never accomplish uh, for you know to, too long so um, chunking down is your friend bite-sized steps of sort of reverse engineering from your big picture into the day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month tasks uh, that you can accomplish. Then what you want to do is sort of commit to that, right? You want to commit time blocks into it. Time blocks is your friend, especially when you're working a full-time job because, you know, from 9 to 5, we are blocked into our work. Very likely, you're not working on your business at that time. So you really only have other times like the evenings and the weekends to do this. So I always advise is uh, to be realistic. So when you first start this, um, don't try to block off every evening of the week to work on your business or your new career direction. Block off Sundays, right, from 3 to 6 p.m., Every single week, non-negotiable, it's like going to a part-time job, right? You're going to commit to that. Maybe take yourself out to a nice cafe. I like to have a glass of wine, some cheese by like a sort of beachside cafe. You know, that's the place that's sort of your happy place, away from your house, away from sort of familiar territories. Um, and it feels a bit like a, uh, a step outside your comfort zone, right? So reward yourself by going out, doing it somewhere where you feel like it's not drudgery. You know, you don't feel like you're going to an office to do this work, uh, but give yourself a new environment to really start this new practice. Um, when you start getting more used to the once a week time commitments to really focus on the goals that you have to do, then you can add more days, right? So if you feel that, right, I'm getting to the mem momentum of the side hustle I'm creating, maybe Fridays in the evenings, I can add another day. So now that might increase to three more hours for the week as a total of six hours a week, which is so much more realistic than trying to do it every single day when you're tired or burnt out from your job, right? So time block and commit to it. All right, so I want to sort of help you uh, with, first of all, getting to your goals um, and then being able to create the plan, right? The step-by-step -step chunk down version of the tasks to get to your goals and then set a really good mindset and habits, uh, practical habits every single day or every week to be able to commit to the things that you say you want to do for your goals. So if you haven't watched it already, earlier on to, in this year, I ran a, a goal planning and focus webinar, uh, which 
comes with an awesome one hour training on how to do this, as well as a kick ass uh, calendar and sort of templates of the day to day tasks that you have to accomplish, um, as well as the planning, the goal planning workbook that's really going to help you figure out what do you want? What are the most important goals for you? And then the plan to make it happen. So somewhere in this video, I'm going to uh, give you the uh, link to get this free training and the free workbook and the free calendar templates and all the things I mentioned, because I think it's so necessary uh, to actually really put your money where your mouth is, right? To say that, hey, your dreams are important to you and this is the plan to make it happen. So I really hope that'll be really helpful for you. And when you're done the training, come back to this video let me know what you discover. Well, let me know what are the one to three goals that you're going to be working on this year or this quarter. Uh, and I will be happy to help you with any questions that you have about your goals. Thanks again for joining me for this episode of Screw the Cubicle TV. And I'll see you later. Hey, thank you so very much for watching Screw the Cubicle TV. And don't forget to subscribe below to get all the latest cubicle crashing content on how to quit your nine to five and create a life and business on your own terms.